So it's a new month. It's a new like season. Yeah, it's coming up. It's it's uh it's like here-ish. Yes, new season, spring, which can only mean one thing new lotion bars. And we are going to talk about lotion bars and I'm going to give you a recipe in this video in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for day 342 of 365 days of soap. And today we are rolling out the spring lotion bar line, which is great because lotion bars are epic. They are like packaging free and so yay, eco. They are well solid and so yay, no water. You're just paying for all of the awesome butters and oils and all of that jazz that goes into it. Yes. And you know, they smell great. They're very long lasting. They provide a nice barrier to your skin. Very hydrating. Love them so very much for sure. Now we've done lotion bars a couple times on the channel in the past. And I've talked to you about how to formulate a good recipe. I've talked to you about uh, what types of oils and butters you should put in it. And today I'm going to give you all of those things. So the amounts, so you can make your own but I still very much recommend you learning the fatty acid profiles of everything that you're putting in, the penetration levels, all of the things, especially for a leave-on product, so you can actually, you know, modify this recipe to suit your needs and what you have in, you know, like in stock, on your shelves, for which to make lotion bars with. Anyway, let's go to the video. Uh, I will talk to you more about lotion bars in the process and all that jazz there. Okay, so lotion bars and you know, let's talk about in this little itty bitty baby video lotion bar formulation um, because that's I Mean I'm gonna give you the recipe, but like what the hell does it matter unless you actually know what all of it does, right? So high level What you're looking for in this re particular recipe is a uh, 10 ounces of hard stuff and eight ounces of liquid stuff like at room temperature. This particular recipe is four ounces of candelia wax or beeswax, either way. You can go either way. Two ounces of cocoa butter and four ounces of shea. So there's your hard stuff. And then for the eight ounces of the liquid stuff, this particular recipe has about two ounces of grapeseed oil in it. And by about, I mean it has exactly two ounces of grapeseed oil in it and two ounces of apricot oil, two ounces of avocado, and two ounces of, there's the apricot going in there, and two ounces of hemp seed, all to equal eight ounces. Now, Lotion bars, th this is a leave-on product, right? And so the, the oils that you're putting in, they actually do impact the skin in different ways. The biggest thing that you want to focus on is the fatty acid profiles and the skin penetration. And if you get something that, if you just put in a whole bunch of like olive oil, well, it's going to be greasy and it's going to be not fun to work with and you're not going to like it. So like you need to know 
the different things that these oils do to your skin when formulating a really good solid lotion bar recipe because I mean what if you need to sub something out like here's the recipe I just gave it to you and we're gonna put some more stuff in it you know later but like I just gave you this recipe cool but if you don't actually know what the different oils and butters do and their penetration rates then how would you know how to sub anything out so you know this is why with all the other lotion bars recipe videos I've done I've given you the percentages and you know that but let's go on to the melt and we'll talk more about that okay so on to the pouring of this very simple very simple at this point so I am going to and by I I mean the Soprentis because I almost never make lotion bars anymore I just here's the recipe do the thing and she will be putting in an extract at I think it's one percent of the total batch weight is what this ends up being and the scent blend ends up being five percent of the total batch weight and the arrowroot powder ends up being uh, about a tablespoon per pound of oils for that and that's the scent that's going in there and the arrowroot is actually important because I love shea butter oh so very much like I love it love shea butter but shea butter can be greasy and so playing with the right ratios for your arrowroot powder to get a nice lotion bar that's not greasy is important and so we have you know a full ass tablespoon there and that actually makes sense for the amount of oils and everything that's in there eight twelve yeah that was a heaping tablespoon and there's about 18 total ounces in this so just over a pound so yeah that logic all tracks that's it about one tablespoon per pound of oils now with the oil qualities and everything that you're looking for with a, a lotion bar again you want to really combine your deep penetrating oils with your easier to penetrate more lightweight oils and so like apricot is and grapeseed both wonderful examples of your very very lightweight oils they both have their antioxidant rich their vitamin rich it's very lovely but then you have moving into that your hemp seed oil which would be a nice replay uh, substitution for like argan for example because it's sort of a a mid penetrating and lots of like skin boosting skin plumping properties within the oil itself so that's awesome and then you have the avocado oil which is a slow penetrator and it has lots and lots of I'm sorry every time I say penetrator in these in these videos I just I have to stop <laughs> sorry yep no mm -mm, we're not we're not doing that tonight but yeah so you need to pay attention well I mean no 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 we're, we're stopping so you need to pay attention to the different fatty acid profiles that the oils like bring bring to the table because if you just used nothing but the eight ounces of liquid oils um, is avocado oil well that would be a very greasy bar or olive oil very greasy bar and so you don't it's more important I think to know the ratio of uh, firm to liquid than anything else because that allows you to then play play with the different ratios and see what works best for you and then you also know how to substitute things out because you're going to want to sub a medium penetration you know liquid with another one or another like light with a light it's like for like all of the things really yes totally but you know there's your recipe go make it and let me know how you like it now we have three different versions going on for the spring line and we just sort of selected from the um, the Maple Street scents that we really loved and we're running with those for the next few months which you know I'm a big fan of because I actually really really love the ones that we picked we did the uh, hibiscus guava as well as the endless love dupe as well as the teak bamboo which actually is not it's not a Maple Street that's actually the only one from Lone Star that I loved And there they are all firmed up and smooth and beautiful and not greasy at all and ready to be wrapped in a coffee filter 
and shipped and no melting problems within you know shipping and it's all they're beautiful this is a good recipe for sure but I really do recommend playing with the different oils and butters that you put in try a mango butter mango butter is delightful but yeah that's a uh, day 342 the spring lotion bars and they are pretty delightful and there they are, the uh, spring lotion bars. And I love each and every one of these. There's no way that I could pick a favorite for the spring line, so I'm very excited to have them on for a couple months, for sure. And yeah, there's like the, the recipe and the things and the doing of all the jazz. Yes, again, I really do recommend learning your fatty acid profiles. I recommend figuring out the, the different penetrating levels of your different oils and butters and learning how you can swap things out. Like for example, a lot of people talk about with lotion bars or with uh, body butters particularly, that they don't like shea because they find it to be too greasy. Well, if that's the case, can you swap a shea butter out with a mango butter in a one-to-one -one ratio? You would know that if you were actually uh, listening to the rest of the stuff in all of my lotion bar videos and really formulating that based on the fatty acid profiles, not just on a random recipe that some person on the internet gives you. So just keep that in mind. For that, make these lotion bars. Let me know what you think, for sure. If you're interested in purchasing these lotion bars and not making them, you can find them on soapandclay.com because that would be excellent. You know, I, I make these, so you could do that too. If you are like, buy it, you can make it but you can also buy it. If you're interested in more soapy antics and seeing what else we do for the remainder of year one, hey, subscribe to the channel, that would be cool. For those of you who are subscribed to the channel, hey, thank you, you're cool, like for sure. I hope you guys had fun today, and I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of soapy fun. Bye.